any gap between the ideal and the real. Are you asking whether I'm an idealist? No. I don't think so. Because I think that's what an idealist is, isn't it? Somebody who no, believes that their ideals are attainable. Oh. So maybe only, maybe I'm just being an idealist. Of course I believe that my work ideals are attainable. when it comes to the human spirit. Mm -hmm. my problems. <laughs> Why is it a problem? I mean, it's not always a problem. I mean, it feels like when you say it's a problem, it's... That's why I'm self-motivated. It's as though... Well, you know, it seems to kind of pessimism. contradict, in a way, the idealism. It seems like pessimism. So are you a pessimistic you like Are you a pessimistic idealist? Any gap between the ideal and the real? That no, you I just don't want to reveal to people how much I truly believe in my ideals. Because I feel like that'll lessen my chance for actually attaining them in a way. Because so where's your idealism when it comes to the human spirit or human... I think that's why I'm self-motivated and... That's what drives my self-motivation, that, that, that mistrust. I don't want to be inhibited. I, I don't want to be inhibited by other people's perceptions of the world, which I think a lot of people have very limited perceptions of what is really happening. So then mistrust is sort of a good thing in your paradigm. What is? Mistrust. Some people operate, some people are, your path is, they try to block it. <gasps> and what is the algae representative of here, in this metaphor? It represents the human, you know, urgency, juice. Yeah, but aside from that, you think, feed off the of other people's energy. Feed off the people's energy. Feed off the people's desires. Feed off the people's energy. Feed off at their core, their inner soul what they feel, how they see the world, what they believe, what their own idealisms are. Do you think they're more like you? I mean, do you think most people are idealists? I think people are probably driven by so your the experience of disappointment than So how do you maintain this idealism in the face of Sounds like a magical world that's wondrous is free of disappointment. Well yeah, it's sort of so like the this world can't offer me can only offer me these things. And then there's this unlimited possibility as to what this world can offer. Not interacting with their bodies in the physical world on a daily basis, having to deal with the constraints of the lower planes, as they call it. Not popular, you know. Yeah. You don't think everything in life has some kind of symbolic materiality? I mean, we can sort of because assume we're like to be I want to be invincible. Do you want to be invincible? Yeah. I want to be. Um, wow. I want to be able to have someone spit in my face and tell me I'm shit. What they experience and how the they experience affect me. Disappointment. Yeah. That sounds lonely. And huh? That sounds very lonely. That's so I mean, it affects me. I see it. It would affect me in the sense that I'd be like, wow, I'm sorry for that person. Oh, like the world. When people say bad world. things about you, do you believe it? Why do you think that is? Because I'm a human being. <laughs> um, you want to please them. You know, and in order to find out if you please them or not, you need to sort of pay attention to evolving. I don't want to say evolution, because you sort of think of evolving, you know.
Yeah, it's not yeah. very Darwinian, what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Evolving. I don't want to say evolution because you sort of think of evolving, you know? Yeah, it's not yeah. very Darwinian, what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, evolve. So it's pleasing the honest part of your idealism? <laughs> it can be, but it doesn't have to be. I think that's probably key. Is separating us two? I think, I've come to think that we all see each other much more clearly than we let on or we believe we're seeing ourselves. And I think that we, one of the great deceptions is the self-deception that other people don't see us for who we are, but no more so than anyone else. Or no less so. I think we're the only people who oh, believe really? us so I think other people can see right through them. Not everyone, but that may be my idealism speaking, though. Maybe even everyone. Yeah, really. <laughs> and it would go on posturing and acting and, I think and trying to believe and doing all these false We all see each other much more clearly than we like believe we're seeing ourselves. So. And I think. You are that worried about me. Yeah, I'm sure there's more to it. You don't think everything is Do you think there's some kind of symbolic significance to me getting that out of materiality? Yeah, that seems like the only possibility, but no, I don't really think it does. I mean, you seem to be a poetic person. That seems to be kind of an unusual statement coming from you. Unexpected. What? It's very likely that I'm wrong. And I act and everything is symbolic. And I'm choosing to like read certain lines and no other lines. Decipher the symbolic motion moments from the unsymbolic moments. Much the way someone can pick out a voice out of the noise. I think, you know, like for me, I constantly see these, these strings, these, these constellations of events, and, and so that's what I'm kind Human of thinking about. Human evolution. And that's what's evolving. But I don't really think about believing in them, you know what I mean? I just, I see them and I seem to naturally say, this is like that, and this is attached to that, and this is... Of so it's pleasing the honest part of your ideas. Families and ideas and thoughts. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. I think that's probably key. The separating us. You know? Yeah, that doesn't sound very Darwinian, what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Evolving.